go. All right. Keontae, big day, returning punts, man. Talk about uh, your day with special teams and, and you know the chances you kind of took and how they paid off. Uh, yeah, I felt like you know the blockers up front did a really good job of you know holding up, giving me you know some space. I feel like on um, the first punt, I felt like I had a, I think it was 11 yards before anybody was even near me. So just when I when I have the opportunity to scan the field, I feel like I, we have good chances. To, you know, to uh, I can find some space and be able to you know create big plays and put our offense in good positions. Um, I feel like the punter kind of woke up towards the end. He started letting the, the ball hang a little bit more, but was just so indecisive on whether it was going to hit the ground or it was going to be in the air. So just look back on last year and wanted to take advantage of, you know, punt return being able to, you know, do that for the offense. So just looking forward to taking advantage of that every week. How much do you think you and Brian especially, I mean, you guys brought it Saturday. How much of an advantage can that be for you guys this season in terms of the return game? Oh, I just feel like, you know, you know, this game and we play is about momentum. So that, that punt return, you know, it can bring a lot of momentum to a game, you know, flip the field for the offense and, and put the offense in better positions to, you know, get points. So I feel like that's a, that's a big play for sure. How, how exciting is it to play in an, a, an aggressive defense like that? You and Donovan coming off the edge and doing yeah. all this stuff. How much fun is that for you? Oh, uh, man, this is, this is uh, it's really fun because I feel like a lot of guys are, you know, sacrifices, sacrificing, you know, in the defense of, you know, making it roll off to us and putting us, you know, giving us layups as our coach Ron calls it, you know, just being able to be in a position to make those plays. It's, it's very exciting playing a defense like that. That first drive for you guys defensively was not good. Uh, could you kind of feel, like, were you getting frustrated at that point? Yeah, I, I mean, we, we kind of, after that first drive, we all got together and was like, okay, we've seen the jab, you know, uh, we felt like, that, I, I me mean, personally, as a you know leader on the, the defense, I felt like that drive was good for us to see, you know, because at the end of the day, um, teams are going to come out fast on us. You know, the first drive is really important to to come out there and then to have them go 89 yards like that. You know, that's not what we want as a defense. So just being able to get that preseason, like early on in the year adversity, and just seeing how we responded was really important. I mean, you you know always got things to build on, but I felt like we responded well. Coach Reeves talked about alignment, a lot of those things. Did you see a lot of the issues Saturday? Did a lot of it come back to alignment and, and kind of assignment issues, things like that? Yeah, Saturday you never really you never really see things, but just, you know, today being able to go up and, and Sunday being able to go up and, and look at things, you kind of see like, oh man, we could have did this right, could have did this right. You know, certain games like that last one, you know, didn't really affect us much, but, you know, as the year goes on, the teams are going to be able to exploit those. So we just want to get on the same page as a defense. And, and once we do that and things start clicking, everyone's thinking at the same level, then that's when we really start having fun. Kante, you had a few you know, games last season where maybe you weren't able to get the ball on, on putt returns. How did you assess that part of your game in the offseason? How did you how did you kind of look to improve that? Which, like you said, you thought you'd have an opportunity to do it again this season. Uh, yeah, just looking at the point where I know that if I can get the ball and I can scan, I can make a play. So just being able to, to fill the ball and, and to, to put trust and the 11, the other 10 guys on the field with me, and just being able to just know that they're going to do their jobs and, and things open up, and just being able to secure the ball. That's some, the big thing, my emphasis. Um, the fair, a fair catch, I had to learn a fair catch is not a bad play. Um, I feel like last year I was I was too antsy to try to make a play, like I was forcing it. This year it's just going to be more of a, if I get the opportunity, I'll make the play. If it, if it hangs up there, you know, fair catch, get offense on the field, and I'll make a play. Emphasizing that security, was that is that just reps? Did, did Coach Burns work with you on that? How did that kind of go about? Really just comfortability. I feel Comfortability and confidence, really. I feel like last year, um, it's just really confidence back there. You, you got to be confident. If you go out there, like, you know, you're thinking too much and, you know, bad things happen. But if you go out there confident, like, no matter what happens on this play, I get the ball in my hands. I get a chance to do something for the offense. You know, I, I get a, I get an opportunity to help them out. That's just how I think about it this year. What, what uh, feedback did you get from the coaches on the decisions that you made on Saturday to field or let go? Or... Um, it was kind of hard because, you know, the week before and the year uh, after we felt like he he punted well and then you know coming out and I guess the stadium and our fans did a good job of you know putting the pressure in our in our rush just you know the ball bouncing so the main the main ob objective was to secure the ball whether it hits the ground or whether it's in the air just secure it um the last one with punt safe I feel like me personally uh I could feel that punt um and it's just it's just all about reps for sure just getting more comfortable as it goes but just building momentum as the year goes on Gunner, talk to us about game one, man. How did you guys, uh, how do you feel you guys did? Uh, you got a lot of yards rushing, yeah. and the quarterbacks weren't on a ton of, uh, under a ton of the rest. Uh, how do you feel you graded out? 
Uh, I mean, I thought it was a really good game, first game. Um, the biggest thing for me, I thought we played really well complimentary football-wise, the offense, especially being able to run and pass. Um, same thing with defense. Like, for me, you always got to capitalize on what the defense does, and even special teams. And I felt like we capitalized a lot on field position and stuff like that, and I thought we played really well as a team, which is something that's really big week one, so. What, uh, uh, do you, when, you, when you look ahead now, Playing a team is going to obviously be bigger and faster and more talented than that team, mm -hmm. and you got to go all the way across across the country to do it. What are the challenges this week? They're different. Um, I mean, there's a lot of challenges. One, we're going to get on a plane and we're going to fly four and a half, five hours to California. Um, a lot of guys, even myself, have never played in California. Um, I've played a game on a long flight like that. We played Hawaii last year and it was an eight hour flight. So I've kind of done that before, but it's a little bit different. Um, the air is a little bit different there. There's a lot of you know differences and stuff. And I mean, even for us, I think the best thing we do is Coach Reese does it and he literally like takes a piece of paper, crumbles it up and throws it away. And that's, you know, UMass is now gone and we're on the next week. You know, we're still zero and zero in our mind. And, you know, there's a lot of challenges every week to every different team you play. So now we're going to try to figure out what we do that, you know, can help us beat Cal. So uh, this this uh, a few weeks ago, we had talked about scrambling quarterbacks. You got a chance to play with what they're, they're calling red zone Robbie. Uh, he was going in the red zone. What was that like for you guys uh, blocking for him down there? Um, I mean, it, it, the man's an electric athlete. Um, we didn't talk about it with some of our defensive guys. He's a lot of guys who run as fast as he are, they're either like fast in the back half or they're really, really quick. He does a little bit of both. And I think that's what kind of makes him special as a runner. Um, I think it's great that we have a guy like that that we can use and he's a weapon for our offense. Um, a lot of teams don't have that. They don't have two quarterbacks that can come in and play and they play kind of differently, but they you know, can still get the job done. Um, I think it's special for him, you know, kind of going through what he's went through the last two weeks and stuff. And, you know, I mean, me and him talked about it, just, you know, how to, you got to maximize the chances you get to play. And I mean, I think scoring three touchdowns is maximizing the plays you get. So I think, you know, that's very important. Um, I think it was it was awesome for him. You know, it was great to watch him do it, so. Peyton was pretty mobile back there as well, too. Talk about blocking for him. Uh, I mean, I think he does a really good job working the pocket. That's something that it takes time for a quarterback to be able to do that. And you can tell when a guy's experienced that they can do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, throwing the ball. I think he made some really, really good throws. I think he really did a good job commanding the offense and stuff. And I mean, as an offensive lineman and even for receivers and running backs, you've got to have a guy back there that can make, can command the offense at all times. And I think he did a really good job doing that. So we heard about perfect Thursdays. Just kind of how was that um, explained to you guys? Uh, what do you maybe as an offensive line unit you know, look for on perfect Thursdays? Just kind of take me through that a little bit. Well, so every team kind of does a perfect Thursday. Um, it's a little bit different here. The way I would describe it as by Thursday, your game plan's in. You know what the other team's trying to do. So it's going out there. It's a lighter practice. You're not really hitting a lot. It's more of a mental day and kind of, you know, for me, it's kind of getting myself ready to really play in the game and kind of understanding, okay, I get down, I see this look, what's about to come? Like kind of anticipating the stuff that they're going to do and stuff. And, um, I mean, your Thursdays, you got to have a clean, crisp practice. You know, you're running your base game plan, you're running your red zone stuff, your third downs. You got to be perfect on that day. So, you can't turn on a game without seeing transfer guys making plays, starting, not all this stuff. Uh, how different is that for, for you guys? I love you to do that. Um, I think it's special. Um, even for me, kind of, I got emotional on the Tiger Walk. Because for me, you know, I mean, I haven't told my parents, like, I've never had so many people cheer for me. And being able to come to a school like Auburn and, you know, be able to play well and stuff and seeing how much the fans really, it means to them is something that's special. I mean, it just, you know, it was kind of a crazy moment for me. Obviously, I've been here for seven months and, you know, part of you is like, you know, when, it, when I put on the pads and run out and see 90,000 people and even on Tiger Walk, like, walking in there is like, dang, like, I really do play at Auburn now. And, um... You know, it's special. I think the transfer portal is something crazy. I remember thinking, you know, I mean, even when I prayed on the field, I'm like, you know, I'm not supposed to be here. You know, this isn't, you know, uh, 10 years ago, this would have never been a thing for a guy to be able to transfer to a big school and play. So for me, I mean, it was just a special moment. It was a special moment for my family. It's something that we'll never forget is me running out the tunnel for the first time, me on Tiger Walk, you know, just meeting so many people. I mean, you know, people know my name and stuff, and that's something that's really special to me. And I mean, it did. I mean, I was emotional about it. It was a crazy opportunity for me to really be able to like 
you know, play in front of 90,000 people. It's something that's special. Um, and that's what I mean, even you saw Colorado had a bunch of, I think they had 63 transfers come in and play and they knocked off the top team. Um, I think it's really changed the landscape of college football when you can, you know, just kind of reload a roster and restack it. So I think it's something that's awesome. This wasn't your first time playing in Dirt Nair though, right? Like you played not. on the opposite side of the field and uh, now this time with the orange and blue on. Uh, talk about what it was like for you, you know, playing for the Tigers this time in Dirt Nair. Uh, I mean, first off, it's just, it's a blessing, you know, when you get to run out and see so many people that, you know, kind of have followed Auburn for so long. And for me to be able to, you know, just again, like what I said to my parents, like, I mean, I'm in sitting there in tears and I'm like, all these people are cheering for me, you know, in my life. I've, been doubted by a lot of people and stuff so for me to be able to walk into a stadium there's 90,000 people that are cheering for me and want me to succeed it's a lot different I mean that's what you know the first time I came to Jordan Henders 90,000 people didn't want me to succeed you know and <laughs> so to have that kind of come in and you know just it was it was really special um the moment like what I kind of said about it is if you ever watch Manti Teo's documentary at the end he kind of talks about how he has to remind himself that people are cheering for him and that's kind of what was going through my head when I'm doing tiger walk and stuff like I'm walking down there and you know I'm high-fiving all these people and all these people coming up to me and I'm like man like this is college football this is real you know what I signed up for I mean even talking to some of my buddies from Western and kind of what they went through Saturday is just like you know they're like how is it and I'm like it's breathtaking you know and I mean it's truly one of the best experiences of my life and I mean I remember my first one for a long long time and I can't wait to have six more opportunities to do it at home so I think it's really really special. Uh, Coach Freeze was in here saying you know because of the tempo you guys play he's comfortable using eight or nine or linemen as starters throughout the season not not just in a game where you guys win by a bunch you're a veteran guy you've been in a couple systems now what's your take on on kind of that approach and and how do you guys sort of practice that mentality of like hey you could rotate at any given drive essentially um i mean the thing that comes to my mind is the more the better i mean i think if you can have nine guys that can play a position and you don't skip a beat that's a big thing in offensive line is most teams have six seven guys who can play and once you get to lineman eight and nine it's kind of hold on to your seat and hope it goes well but for us to be able to play nine guys and rotate them in pretty seamlessly I think it's awesome um for me you know once I kind of get into the rhythm of the game and stuff changing positions is just something that they've asked me to do and it's something that I've done a long time I've done it even in high school I'd do it where in certain games I would move over and stuff so I mean for me it's nothing really new last year I played in a tempo offense it's not nearly as fast as this it's obviously different because we run the ball a lot more but uh, just kind of pushing the pace. And I think once guys started to believe in what it was and what it actually looks like, you know, we see it some in fall camp, what happens when you really tempo somebody. But I mean, you saw the first drop where they're, you know, they're kind of, they're breathing heavy. They don't know how to line up and stuff and what it actually does to a defense. And it almost kind of makes it easier the faster you go because it's harder for them to go and look at the sidelines and get a signal in and stuff like that. And I think once guys started buying into it, it kind of, you know, made it a lot easier to do it. Um, I mean, I think it's great. We have nine guys who can play the position. I mean, it's, that's what you want is to have as much depth as possible at every position. So, I mean, that's it's something that's important. You talked about 10 years ago. Coming out of high school, uh, were you, I guess you weren't really high, real highly recruited. I was number 54 overall in South Carolina. I was a two-star recruit, and I had three FBS offers. So. It, um, I wasn't the mostly recruited guy, even in my own high school. Um, you know, there was times at Western, you know, that I didn't think I would ever, if you would have told me I was going to play college football at the FBS level, I would have been like, there's no way. So, I mean, that's what, you know, kind of for me, just it's all came to fruition. You know, I get to play here at Auburn and how special it is. And, you know, that's what I like to tell kids. And, like, you know, when I go to, like, different elementary schools or something, or I see a kid and they ask for autographs, just follow your dreams like I'm not supposed to be here and look at me now so at what point was there a point when you said I can't I am good enough to do this um I think so last year during the season I know I was gonna have an opportunity that if I played well to be able to you know if I wanted to leave and go somewhere bigger I could uh, the second week against Hawaii, I was like the highest. I had like the highest pass pro grade. And I mean, when you throw the ball 40 times, that's kind of what you want. You know what I'm saying? You want a high pass pro grade. Um, and so I was like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I am pretty good at this. Played Indiana next week, I had a really good game. And then kind of going through the season, I was like, okay, 
you know, this is something that I could, you know, realistically do. And then I got the chance to go block Derek Hall from Auburn University. And um, everyone's seen what he's done here. And, you know, now he's in the NFL and he's a second round pick. And I'm like, okay, if I can block this guy, then I can, I'm pretty confident I can go to the biggest stage and block seven SEC guys. So that kind of made the decision. Um, there's a lot of prayers, a lot of discussions through my family. And um, even Coach Thornton brought it up the other day about what I told him when I came on my visit was just, Pretty much, if I can play in the SEC, I can, I'm going to have a chance to play in the NFL, but I'd rather know than not know. Um, I felt like coming to Auburn just gave me the best opportunity to do that, so kind of made the decision as easy. Your position group did not give up a sack, correct, mm -hmm. on Saturday? Yeah. Is that a goal that you guys set to, to be clean? Yeah, I mean, that's, metric? you know, every offensive line has a goal to not give up a sack and have a certain yards per carry, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we ended up hitting both of those. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if you can keep the quarterback up, you can give him a chance to push the ball downfield. If you can open up holes for the running back and create explosive runs, you're going to have a chance to win football games. That's two big ones, not turning the ball over, which is we have some control into that as an offensive line, but that's kind of more of a skill guy stuff. But, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, going into a game and giving them no sacks is really crucial to the success of our team. So 